da na 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 Explorers! Welcome! I am so glad that you have joined me today for our explore, explore, wait, let me get that, exploration, yes! So do the theme song with me. Da na 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 na, Explorers! Da na 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 na, Explorers! We are ready to explore. I am so glad that you've joined me for another week of virtual online junior church. I am excited. We have an awesome true story that we're looking at today that actually happened. It happened a long time ago, but it still actually happened. And I am so excited to be able to explore the... What are we exploring again? I always forget. Is it, uh, is it the pictures that are on the wall here? That's what it is, right? It's the pictures. No, that's not right. No. What are we what are we exploring? Oh, that's right. It's Did you get it? Is it the Bible? It's the Bible. I love looking in my binoculars. Sometimes I get distracted by what I see, but right now I see some some little kids out there. Hmm. They better be listening to their parents or whoever's at home. Anyway, see, I get distracted very easily when I look in my binoculars. Anyway, we have an awesome story that we're looking at today, and I am so excited to be able to talk to you about what we are looking at in the Bible as we explore God's Word. And so, I want to start off by asking you guys a question. Are you ready? It's not a super hard question, but have you guys ever seen or heard, actually, of a trumpet? A trumpet. I'm going to show you a picture of one. Okay, it's an instrument that makes music, right? It's an instrument that makes music. This is a trumpet. This is the kind of trumpet that if you were to look for one today, go into a store and ask for a trumpet, this is what people would think of. All right, this is probably what comes to your mind. You blow in this end and the sound comes out of that end. And if you push the different um, buttons that are on it, it changes the sound just a little bit. So it's just like any other musical instrument that makes some different sounds so that way it goes and, and makes music, right? Can you guys make a trumpet sound with just your voice or just your mouth? You can even pretend like you're playing a trumpet while you do it. Ready? I'm a good trumpet player. Trumpeter. Trumpeter. Trumpeteer. I don't know what they're called, but I'm sure it's got the word trumpet in it somewhere. Anyway, this is a trumpet that we think of today. Actually, did you know that musical instruments go all the way back into chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible? Remember, creation is chapter 1, and then Adam and Eve sin uh, in, in chapters 2 and 3. We, we sort of have that account. It's chapter 3. And the very next chapter, we hear about, or we have a reference to musical instruments. So uh, music is, is an awesome thing, but today we actually are looking at some version of a trumpet. We're looking at a story, our story, remember, that takes place way back a long time ago, but actually happened. Um, our Bible story is going to have a trumpet in it, but it's not going to have this kind of trumpet. Okay, let me show you a picture of the trumpet, it, would, it was actually at that point in time, it wasn't called a trumpet, it was called a horn. And so you can see the picture up here of a ram's horn is what it would have been. And so uh, they would have used a ram's horn and blown in the one side and made some different sounds that come out of it. It doesn't have the buttons, but it was still a musical instrument. Now I actually have a sound of a ram horn. Let me pull it up here. So that way you guys can hear it, okay? Um, it's a ram's horn, and this is somebody blowing into it, okay? If we can find it. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure you can hear it. That's my favorite part. Where he goes, dun, 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 dun. Anyway, that's what a ram's horn, that's what uh, this instrument would have sounded like 
back in the Bible story that we are going to be looking at. So our story actually today, it also involves a miracle. So let's check out our Bible story for today. So before we get started, and and this is a a story that we've referenced already. I've actually talked about just a little bit. But um, before we get started, I just want to to sort of challenge you guys to be listening. All right. I have three words that I'm going to say as I say the story. And as I say any one of those words, I want you to do what the word says. Okay. So the first word is going to be what we're looking at. It's going to be trumpet. Okay. Um, or ram's horn, I don't know which one I'll say, but when I'm saying trumpet, this is what I'm looking, this is what I'm talking about, that's what we're thinking of. Um, And so when I say trumpet, I want you to stop and make a trumpet sound, go just like they did in the video, or on on my phone, okay? And the second word is going to be march. Okay, so when you march, you you can't see my arms, but my arms are going like this, side to side, okay, when you march, so you can stand up and you can march every time that I say the word march, all right, and then when when we get to the the other word, it's, it's actually shout, okay, so we've got trumpet, marching, and shouting. Now, I don't want you... To scare anybody, if you've got a little baby brother or sister or somebody uh, that's resting at your house, don't scream so loud that you wake them up. But you could just, you could even whisper scream, right? Go, ah, and do it, but not make a super loud noise, okay? Please make sure it's okay with mom and dad. If you're actually going to scream, we don't want to hurt anybody's eardrums or scare anybody, all right? Because normally we only scream when we're hurt, right? Or something's really, really wrong, okay? So you got three words. I want you to do it when you hear me say it. So we got march. And when you march, I just want you to march in place, all right? And then when you hear hear the trumpet, you can make a trumpet sound. And then shout. I want you to shout, okay? Um, Don't do it super long, okay? Just do it real quick and then continue to listen for the next word that I might say, all right? So we have our, our picture for our story today. There it is. Our picture for our story today, it's actually the story of Jericho. Do you guys remember who we've been talking about? What book of the Bible? The guy that's leading the nation of Israel, which is God's people, he is the one whose name is the book of the Bible that we're looking at. And his name is Joshua. We're in the book of Joshua. And so far, we've looked at Joshua and how God has brought them into the land and encouraged them to be strong and courageous. Remember, they crossed the river last week. And so here we are, we're moving forward. And remember, this, they crossed into this land that God promised and said, this is yours. I'm going to give this to you. And so they've crossed into this promised land. They're here in this beautiful place, but there's still other people in it. It's not their country yet. It's not their land. It's God's promise to them, but they have to um, get the people out, right? So this is where we start to see that happening, okay? And the first city that they come to is the city of Jericho, which you can see up here on the screen. Jericho was known for having really big walls, okay? And so we're going to read. I'm actually going to read it in, in my Bible. In, Jer- in, sorry, in Joshua chapter 5, um, in verses 13 to 15, all right? So the nation of Israel is a, is a lot of people, right? They're camping outside of the, the city of Jericho, which was known for its walls and to be really hard to get into. And so the city of Jericho is all tight and nobody's allowed in and nobody's allowed out because if you lived in Jericho and you knew that somebody that was out there wanted to take over, you probably would be a little bit concerned about that, maybe even a little scared. Right. So the nation of Israel was standing or was hanging out outside of the city and uh, Joshua goes up maybe to look at the city or or goes near the city. It says, now Joshua was near Jericho. He looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. So he's just standing there with a sword. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or are you for our enemies? And the man replied, neither. But. As commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. So he's a commander of the army of the Lord. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does the Lord have 
for his servants. So he, he showed him respect. He fell down because Joshua understood that this was an angel. It was somebody that was sent by God. And, and the, the angel says, the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So you'll remember a couple weeks ago we talked about how God is holy. He's set apart. He's totally different. And one of the ways in the Old Testament that we see that being shown is they can't even have their shoes there because their shoes are all dirty. And so they have to take them off when they're anywhere near um, somebody that's sent by God or God's presence. And so this is sort of what we see here. And so this guy comes and he tells him exactly what the battle plan is. But the battle plan is really weird because the battle plan involves them marching around the city of Jericho. So stand up and do your little march. Okay. Now, I'm not going to stop every time I say one of these words, okay? So you kind of have to, to do it real quick and then keep listening, all right? But uh, the angel told them, and God told Joshua, you guys are going to march around the city one time every day for six days in a row. And then on the seventh day, you're going to march around the city again. And instead of just doing it once, you're going to do it seven times. And on the seventh time, I want you to shout. Okay, now each time that they marched around the city of Jericho, the first six days, they had their trumpets with them. Okay, they had their ram's horns, right? And they were ready to shout and, or well, they were ready to blow the trumpets. We'll say it that way. And then on the seventh day, after they walked around it the seventh time, they were going to shout and blow their trumpet after they marched around. Did you guys get all that? <laughs> I hope you're having fun with it, but not being too crazy for your parents or whoever's there at home. All right. But that, that was the plan that God gave them. And while they were walking around the city each day, they were supposed to carry the Ark of the Covenant, which again represented God's presence. It, it had the Ten Commandments in it, and it was uh, a really important thing for the, for the nation of Israel and for God. And so they were carrying this around. They probably felt a little silly, right? When Joshua told the people, hey, we're going to walk around and just once for a couple days for like a week. And then the last day we're going to do it a couple more times. And then we're going to blow on the trumpets and shout. And oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to have the Ark of the Covenant with us, this big box. And so if people saw this, they probably would have thought if they weren't an Israelite, they would have been like, what is going on here? This is crazy. This is ridiculous. But what we see at the seventh time after they walk, march around, and they blow the trumpet and they shout, this is what our picture is. It's the walls come tumbling down. And so today our story really talks about how God gives them this almost crazy plan. But because God is with them and they trust and obey God, he makes this happen. He brings about a miracle in the lives of the nation of Israel. And that's an awesome thing. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be walking around and shouting and marching and blowing trumpets or anything like that. Nothing's fallen down, okay? But Joshua and the nation of Israel show us this great example that we can trust God. We can obey God. We can follow God even when we don't understand the plan. We don't understand what's going on. Sometimes I know that when I was a kid, it was hard to listen to my parents because I didn't understand what they were thinking. I didn't think that their plan or their instruction to me was the best idea. But as I've grown up now, I've realized that it really was. They were looking out for my best. And the same is true for God. He's looking out for what's best for us. He wants to help us, but we have to trust him. And we have to obey what he teaches us to do. And, and the, the story about Jericho and the nation of Israel taking it down uh, is a great example of what God can do when we do trust and obey in him. Now, do you remember um, who, who got saved from this? Who got to stay with the nation of Israel? It was Rahab, right? Rahab, we talked about a couple weeks ago. Rahab, because she kept the spies safe that were from Israel. All of Rahab and her family got to stay safe. Either um, way, thanks for listening. I would encourage you, I know I said this a couple weeks ago, but build the walls of Jericho. And maybe you have some blocks at home. Build it with some blocks or Legos or something, and then destroy it, knock it down. And, and you can even pretend to have your little Lego guys or you know, little whatever you can make 
Um, be creative and, and pretend like they're walking around, um, marching around the city of Jericho and blowing their trumpets and shouting. Uh, enjoy that. Um, take some time to do that. If you do it, shoot, um, take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see it. Um, and uh, I'd love to just encourage you to continue um, to watch and to explore the Bible, whether it's here with me on a Sunday um, or during online virtual junior church whenever you're watching, or whether it's throughout the week with your mom or dad or whoever's at home. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week for Explore the Bible.